Joanna Sternberg, and I'm at Amoeba San Francisco, and this is what's in my bag. To play a game, I'm not too proud to pray. I will be with you, I will be with you, I will be with you someday. The first artist I picked is um, Mahalia Jackson. I saved my soul from a burning hell. Said it was God, the rage and and then I picked Mahalia Jackson with Duke Ellington, which is a very historic concert, including the song Come Sunday, which he wrote just for her to sing. Her music has gotten me through the hardest times of my whole life. Once you get to hear her, you're cast under a spell in the best way. Sam and Dave, the best of Sam and Dave. I'm a soul man. I'm a soul man. I think I started listening to Sam and Dave when I was maybe at seventh grade. And up till now, it still um, puts me in a great mood and teaches me a lot about singing and har harmonies and teaches me a lot about musicianship and the backing band, the bass lines, just the feel of the music. Uh, Miles Davis, the, f the first one I'll talk about is Porgy and Bess. It's Gil Evans' arrangements, Miles Davis playing like a trumpet concerto over Porgy and Bess with, with big band, orchestra, tuba, everything. It's the kind of thing you listen to a thousand times. And then of course, Kind of Blue. I actually transcribed all the bass lines from this, and it was really very important to my musical learning as a bass player. And also starts with a bass solo, so what? So, pretty cool. First I picked Jazz Masters, um, Verve, and then I picked Nina Simone at Town Hall. And the reason I picked Nina Simone is because I don't think I wanted to sing before I was, heard her. Like, I didn't want to. I didn't think I could. But then I heard her sing, and it was this song, You Can Have Him, track five, an Irving Berlin song. The first time I heard it, I was sobbing, and I still am sobbing from this. And it almost sounds like she's crying by the end of it, but I can't really tell, but she could be. And then when I started singing, first started singing, I tried to do an impression of her. I didn't know what my voice was, so I was doing this weird impression of Nina Simone. It wasn't working out. So luckily I got vocal lessons to make me stop trying to do that. And also, um, yeah, the Jazz Masters is so cool because she plays all these really beautiful piano solos, really jazz piano solos, but very inspired by Bach because she was such a classical virtuoso pianist. Brahms, four symphonies, Von Karahan. I really love Brahms. He wrote four symphonies in his life. The first one, I think it took 10 or 20 years to write because he was so stressed out by his obsession with Beethoven. So that's kind of inspiring to me when I can't write. I'm like, <laughs> it's okay to be obsessive and take a while. And I love all these symphonies equally. I've been lucky enough to play bass in them all. Uh, the first one I ever played is number two, which I've written a whole story for in my head. It's about like a fish, but it starts off as the fish swimming out to sea and then a ship. I have a whole thing in my head, but yeah, I'm obsessed with these. Scott Joplin, The Complete Works, Richard Zimmerman on piano. This is like my biggest songwriting inspiration are Scott Joplin's melodies. Just the feeling of his music really is a very antidepressant for me and very inspiring and it's great to listen to when you're walking around, when you're drawing. Okay, so then I picked Blind Lemon Jefferson complete releases. There was so many 
other guitarists and singers I wanted to choose from that era, but this was um, the first one I got obsessed with. When I say obsessed, it's like I get I kind of go through phases where I'm obsessed with this. So then I'll listen to it over and over and over and over. And over. There was a good year where I was only listening to Blind Lemon Jefferson. It really taught me a lot, so much about guitar playing and singing and fr phrasing, um, just trying to be better at the instrument, trying to do my best to learn from everything I hear. I can't play gu guitar that well, but I certainly strive for, you know, the masters, the geniuses of the guitar, like Blind Lemon Jefferson. Next up is Paul Robeson. I just picked the essential Paul Robeson and I picked the original, oh, Ballad for Americans. I'm tired of living and scared of dying. And Paul Robeson's just one of my favorite singers. Also listening to his singing teaches me a lot about bass playing with the, playing with the bow, like trying to emulate his voice. And he was also an activist. He was a very special person, but the singing is, uh, I mean, it's like, yeah, I'm very, very obsessed with certain singers, and he is one of them. I love your daughter. Ornette Coleman. I picked something else. The Shape of Jazz to Come. Tomorrow is the question. Ornett Coleman, like, getting into his music it really changed the way I thought about music because there was less rules, and rules make me very anxious. And, and he follows all the rules without following any. Like, he's able to follow all the rules. He knew exactly where he was in every, every song. He could solo over anything. He knew exactly what was going on the whole time, even though someone listening might be like, what is that? Like, the whole thing is just so inspiring. <laughs> Thelonious Monk. Uh, I first picked Thelonious Monk plays Duke Ellington. I admire the fact that he was classically trained, classical virtuoso, and he he kind of invented his own technique of playing, but he learned the initial technique because there's a certain way to play that if you follow it, you won't get, break your hand, and people probably thought he was gonna break his hand, but he wasn't. He already had all the muscles from playing concertos and stuff. So, yeah, he's such a genius. He was such a genius, brilliant, Thelonious Monk. One of my favorite musicians ever. All this stuff is my favorite ever. Awesome, well thank you so much for shopping with us. Thank you. People.